So hello everyone, uh, welcome to uh, uh, our meeting today, uh, Hepatia uh, Alexandria Quantum Computing Group uh, Series. Uh, today we have uh, Shadab Hussein. Uh, Shadab is currently working uh, as a developer advocate uh, at the London Stock Exchange Group. He is also the co-founder of Quantum Computing uh, India Community. Uh, he formerly worked as a data scientist for startups uh, and multinational corporations. Uh, Shadab has around four years of experience in analytics, building end-to-end -end machine learning pipelines on the cloud using Agile. Uh, Shadab has published few research papers uh, at national and international conferences. Uh, his current research uh, focuses uh, on investigating uh, use cases uh, of quantum computing in finance and healthcare. I think today's talk, portfolio optimization using Qiskit uh, and uh, Apon Data API is in finance. Uh, and hope we can see him again uh, in uh, in healthcare to show because we are also interested in healthcare data analytics. So uh, please shut up. Uh, the ground is yours. Sure. Thanks a lot, Ahmed, for uh, giving introduction and for giving me a chance to present my work today. And it's a uh, Christmas Eve, so Merry Christmas to you all. And thanks for joining today's session, like even during the holidays. Uh, so to start with, uh, so we all have seen broad applications of quantum computing in different uh, domains and sectors, whether it is healthcare or uh, manufacturing companies or automobile companies or even in finance industry. So uh, yeah, so today we are going to talk about uh, one of the use cases of finance uh, where I tried using Quizkit for portfolio optimization with uh, Icon Data API. So I will talk more about Icon Data API and how this integration was being done with Quizkit in like uh, in upcoming topics, in upcoming slides. Uh, before that, uh, let me talk a bit about Quantum Computing India and uh, how we started with it. Okay, so the agenda for today will be like uh, we will see what is quantum computing and application of uh, it's like uh, in quantum finance portfolio optimization and uh, we will just touch base about option pricing as well. Then we will see what all packages we need to install uh, for this hands on and how we will get the data using icon uh, API. And then we will, using that data, basically we will be uh, doing the, we'll be seeing, we'll be doing the comparison of classical and uh, quantum implementation of it. Okay. Uh, so moving forward, uh, Ahmed has already introduced me. Like uh, I started my career back in 2017 as a systems engineer. Uh, that was designation back at Infosys but I was working in the data science team there as well. And then after that, uh, I switched to a startup that then again, one more startup than MNC. And then back in 2019, I was introduced to quantum computing, uh, which was very fascinating about me. And I was always uh, tech curious. I wanted to learn like uh, what's happening in this and how quantum computing can change the, can bring out the revolution in, uh, in the industry. So, I interacted with few folks from IBM who were working on IBM quantum side. Then I met with few people from Azure quantum as well. So that time Microsoft was also starting and doing the meetups. So I attended one of the workshops and I got interested in this a lot because of which I started one of the largest uh, community in India, Quantum Computing India. And we have uh, 1000 plus members so far in this and we have hosted several uh, fellowships, events, online events, and hackathons, and all. Um, that was like the community site to share the knowledge with the like-minded folks. Uh, but full time, I was working as a data scientist, and still, like, I'm working as a developer advocate at uh, London Stock Exchange Group. So yeah, so that's it about me. Okay, so uh, let's move to the topic. Uh, like what we are for what we have joined the session today. Okay, so um, 
while working at lscg like uh, my core responsibility is to look at the use cases what we can do with the products and uh, uh, being myself interested towards the quantum side i tried using the using one of the definitive product uh, icon data api it is a desktop workspace uh, for getting the real time data and uh, implementing this use case okay so this will be the agenda for today which i will try covering in next uh, 30 35 minutes and last 5 to 10 minutes i will keep up keep open for the questions and answers uh yeah so at any point if uh, there is any question please feel free to ping me in the chat and uh, i will try to take it up okay so just to in introduce you all to the problem statement here so many of the financial institutions like uh, goldman sachs jp morgan and many others like these two three are the big tech big players in the finance industry they are exploring the use cases of quantum technologies like how they can leverage the power of quantum computers in finance and uh, many of the use cases are being developed so uh, you all would have come across uh, many of the uh, use cases by quiz uh, by ibm q even penny line and all so in this uh, like session we are going to see like how we can make use of quantum computers for building an uh, optimal portfolio for which i have picked uh, fang stocks which is now being uh, renamed as mark like after facebook being renamed as meta and uh, there are many ways to do the portfolio optimization but uh, here we will be looking over mean variance portfolio optimization i will try to explain that in layman term like uh, and then uh, we will talk about some basic concepts of quantum computing if anyone is new to this session and we will jump to the portfolio optimization then. okay so uh, yeah so talking about quantum computing uh, we all know that uh, as in classical computers we store the information in bits 0 and 1 the same way in quantum computer we store the information in the form of qubits which can be in the state of 0 1 0 or 0 or 1 at both at the same time simultaneously uh, which gives like uh, exponential speed compared to a normal computer because of uh, this superposition property of storing the information there and we only get to know the real value what is stored in the qubit when we measure uh, when we measure the qubits there right so superposition and entanglement are two main quantum mechanical phenomena based on which uh, the computation happens in the quantum computer right so superposition is uh, like we all would be knowing about schrodinger's cat experiment in which uh, a cat was being locked in a box with a sealed bottle of poison and if we have to find the answer for the question whether the cat is alive or that if the bottle is broken and open and if the cat is right or not we cannot tell exactly until we open the box and observe by ourselves whether the cat broke the bottle and drank the poison or the bottle is still there and uh, cat is alive or uh, the bottle is broken but cat didn't uh, drink the poison right so uh, another example to understand that uh, like when we toss the coin in the air we cannot tell whether we will get head or tail until we until the until we see the coin position right until the coin is in the rest position Like that. Till the coin is in the air, it can be head, it can be tail, like that. And uh, another important property is entanglement, like in which uh, the two quantum states or two or more objects they will be related with each other. And if there will be any small change in one of the object, the change. the effect of it can be observed in the other object as well to understand that like uh, if there is a like uh, photon spins qubit is used uh, is photon spins so a photon can either have spin up or spin down if we have to entangle photons they must then they must have opposite spins if one is up then the other must be down 
So this is just a basic about quantum computing. Those who are new to it. So based on these two major properties, the computation happens in the quantum computer. There are different types of quantum computers available available in the market. So I'm not going to go there. Yeah. So coming back to the why quantum computing for finance, right? So there are few NP hard problems which are very time taking or computationally very expensive when we try to solve them on classical computers, right? So researchers basically and big tech giants in the finance industry and even the tech industry, they are exploring the use cases in uh, different sectors and they came up with uh, many of the use cases. Uh, just these two I have named here. If you go to Penny Lane official website or DWeb official website or even QuizKit uh, demo, you will find uh, many more use cases beyond this like credit risk and all. So yeah, so portfolio optimization option pricing is uh, like few of them, two of them, like uh, two of the use cases. In this uh, notebook, I'm going to talk about portfolio optimization. Option pricing is still a uh, work in progress, which uh, soon will be done. And like whatever use cases I have seen so far using QuizKit and all, they are using European call option pricing with some fixed parameters, and I'm still trying to modify those parameters with some real time data to get it worked. So this is work in progress soon. The article will be out for this as well. So talking about portfolio optimization, right? So when we talk about op portfolio optimization, it is a kind of uh, optimization problem. Suppose we as an investor, if we have a list of assets and like we have decided, OK, these are the assets in which we want to invest, but we want to find out out of those uh, options which we have selected, we want to find out the optimal set of assets which can maximize our return, but at the same time minimize the risk, right? And this risk factor varies based on individual to individual risk bearing capacity. So this is one of the like uh, optimization problem which can be formulated as quadratic programs, which are very well studied classically and are computationally very difficult to solve. Right? And option pricing is Another uh, like example in which we, it is an estimation problem, which relies on Monte Carlo's uh, simulation method theory, uh, in which we want to estimate. Uh, and I mean, in the if the function that we want to estimate is a difficult function, then classical computers will have a very slow convergence. So that's why quantum computers comes in the picture, where uh, we hope to improvise these kind of algorithm by by using by making use of near term quantum devices, whatever we have. And uh, with in future, if we have fault tolerant devices in next couple of years, like the progress in the progress in the field of quantum computing is very fast. So soon we can see some fault tolerant devices as well, which can give us better results. Right. So heuristic algorithm like uh, variational quantum eigen solver have a classical and quantum processor. So it depends on the problem that we want to solve. So I mean, right now, if we are testing, we are not able to prove much speed up uh, right now, but it is being expected that in near term future, the speed up will be very exponential. And if we, on the other hand, if we look into the future, when we get uh, fault tolerant quantum computers, then uh, algorithm like Grover search and all with these, with the help of these algorithms, we can expect a uh, quadratic speed up. So for Monte Carlo simulations, uh, we have uh, an quantum algorithm called quantum amplitude estimation, with which we can also expect a quadratic speed up. So talking about quantum finance, right? So there are so Qiskit basically provides a different uh, package uh, now for uh, for quantum finance. Earlier it was being clubbed as uh, as a part of Qiskit package and uh, the these functions and modules were being provided as part of the main package Quizkit. But right now, Quizkit Finance is being provided as a separate package in which we have application part, circuit part, and data providers. So in application part, there are different applications being implemented like portfolio optimization, option pricing, and all. So portfolio optimization is a kind of uh, NP-hard problem. 
and uh, it can be formulated as quadratic programs and can be solved using uh, near term rational algorithm or uh, like with heuristic and quadratic both so uh, in near term we can expect it to uh, solve using variational algorithm and with fault tolerance we can expect to solve using global search and option pricing is a slow convergence problem which uh, uses monte carlo simulations and we can expect the quadratic speed up for this using quantum amplitude estimation algorithm then we have circuits uh, where we see the probability distribution of your functions are getting used. Then we have data provider modules here in which either we can make use of uh, random data or we can load some real time stock data. So in Qiskit, we have support using uh, Wikipedia, I think, uh, yeah, Wikipedia, then Yahoo Finance package and all. And even European call option pricing package is also like uh, European call option pricing example is also given there. So two of the major applications we have seen portfolio optimization and option pricing. So here what we are going to do is uh, if you go and see, let me uh, start from here actually. So if you go to Quiskit option uh, portfolio optimization uh, we will observe that uh, whatever code they have used, right? Uh, it was being, uh, I mean, this uh, demonstration and all is being done using. Uh, I mean, this tutorial basically I kept as the base for creating, uh, for working with this real time data using Icon Data API. So if you can see, we have a few parameters predefined and few of the functions are being predefined here, right? And the data set also they are loading some random data here and for in few examples they have uh, loaded the uh, data using quantum uh, using yahoo finance as well so in this case what i have done is uh, instead of uh, making use of existing support whatever is being provided by quizkit i tried uh, playing around and uh, plugging in the data from some new uh, data provider like uh, in this case it is icon api and tried using the historical data and see how it's going to work. So talk. Uh, so talking about mean variance portfolio optimization, right? So portfolio portfolio optimization, as I told, like it is a process of selecting best assets out of the available options so that the return for the investor can be maximized and the risk for the miss can be minimized, right? So there are some basic terms which we need to know before moving ahead. Risk, it is the deviation of the return on investment from the expected level. Risk capacity varies from investor to investor. Return is like whatever profit or reward an investor makes on the investment he or she has done for the given asset. And portfolio is a collection of assets. It can be stocks, currencies or bonds. Okay. So there are different strategies or frameworks for portfolio optimization, and we are going to dive deep in mean variance portfolio theory. This is also known as modern portfolio theory. It is a very basic one, but good to explore use cases on quantum computers. And uh, since uh, Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and Google, these are like top performing tech companies. So I have loaded the historical data of these five companies. And try executing them on classical and quantum using quantum and classical algorithm both. Okay, so yeah, so to understand this, like uh, it can be given by mean of qx to the power t, summation of x minus mu to the power tx. And uh, so this is the notation which we have used in this equation. So x denotes the vector of binary decision variable. So here X indicates whether a particular asset should be, which asset should be picked and which asset should not be picked. If the value of X is one, then that asset should be picked. If the asset of, if the value of X is zero, then that asset should not be picked. Mu here defines the expected returns for the assets. Sigma here specifies the covariances between the assets. And Q is the con 
Q greater than zero controls the risk appetite appetite of the decision maker. So Q is basically the risk factor here, and B denotes the budget, the number of assets to be selected out of M. So whenever a portfolio, whenever an investor makes his or her portfolio, right? So out of n shortlisted assets, he will look for either the maximum he can select all the n assets to invest in, or he will be selecting some less than n as number of assets for the investment. So that uh, and all the investment will be like uh, based on his or her finding. It will be diversified so that uh, lesser can be the risk and uh, the reward can be maximized there. Okay, so to understand this, suppose uh, let's uh, under try to understand this example first. If uh, an investor has to create a portfolio and he has invested in two assets, asset A and asset B, the price of asset A is $1,000 and the price of asset B is $3,000. For asset A, we are expecting return of 5% and for asset B, we are expecting return of 10%. So in a total portfolio value of $4,000, the weight of asset A will be 25% and the weight of asset B will be 75%, right? So the total expected return of the portfolio will be in terms of weight of these assets multiplied by the expected return. So 25% into 5% plus 75% into 10%. That is 8.75% 8 will be the expected return. That's how we normally calculate. But when it comes to portfolio variance side, it is more complicated to calculate because uh, we will not just go with the sim uh, simple weight average. Instead, we will also look for the correlation of the both the assets, right? So assume for these asset A and asset B, we have a correlation of 0.65. Okay, and standard deviation is 7% for asset A and 14% for asset B. Now, if we have to calculate the portfolio variance, then this will be the formula for that and we will get 0 0.0137 portfolio variance. And then the portfolio standard deviation for both the assets when we calculate the square root of the answer, that will be 11.7% approximately. So this is how portfolio optimization is being done. Like uh, we are, whenever an investor has to invest, he will do these kind of calculations to find out the risk and the profit. So uh, let's come to the Fong, right? So since we have picked five assets here, right? So we need for each asset we are going to map with one qubit and um, so the total number of possible combination of Fang, like which assets should be picked and which assets should not be picked, I tried describing here. So the total number of possible states for picking any optimal combination of these assets will be 2 to the power 5. That will be 32 possible states we can expect here. Okay. And uh, so these are the states like we have seen in uh, like normal logic gates as well, like how the and condition or condition works. Right. So the same big triple, uh, each of the qubits represents one of the states of this stock. Zero means that particular stock has not been selected. One means that particular stock has been selected. Uh, yeah. So talking about some current limitations, right? So right now we uh, publicly open quantum systems are uh, with very less number of qubits. So if we have to experiment around with thousands of portfolios or with high amount of data, it becomes very time consuming. And since we don't have that uh, such quantum systems publicly available with high number of qubits, so there are certain limitations. Uh, Error in the quantum systems, and uh, till then uh, we don't have fault-tolerant quantum systems. Uh, we are not like quadratic speedup is still yet to be achieved for many use cases, right? 
and one of the major problem like even i have faced multiple times while working on quantum machine learning problem is there is not much efficient way to load classical data into quantum states and perform fast computations with them like small use cases are being developed in quantum machine learning with smaller set of data but as the data set size is increasing like even from 300 or 200 records if we're increasing to 1000 records or 2000 records also then also the kernel keeps running for like for a very long time we don't get the results very soon so i mean these if i mean this this lacking people are still lacking in this area to load classical data into quantum states to perform faster computations and uh, Yeah, quantum error rate of the hardware should be very small, and these are being like uh, handled using the uh, uh, NISC uh, algorithm. Right. So let's start with some of the hands-on, like uh, what I have done uh, while working on this. So we'll start with setting up the environment and package installation. So QuizKit setup and installation, we can. Uh, Run this command for installing QuizKit and for QuizKit Finance Package Version 0.2.1. I have used in this. So QuizKit is an open source uh, framework provided by IBM Q team, and it gives us uh, capability or access to interact with quantum computers or simulators, quantum simulators directly. And QuizKit Finance is a separate package which is. Uh, it contains unsaid entry components for stocks or security problems and portfolio optimization option pricing and all are few of the problems which people have worked on in this so after installing the package uh, we can check the version of each of the modules being installed and we can set up the api token from the ibm q website here so if any one of you don't know you can go to quantumcomputing.ibm.com you can uh, sign in here if you have the account if you don't have the account you can uh, create an account and uh, get the api access from here okay and uh, next is the icon api right? so it, icon is a work space uh, product provided by refinitiv and using this api it gives capabilities to data scientist quants to prototype or productionize solutions right so if any one of you i mean it's similar kind of uh, i mean it's a whole work space which uh, has python support python package as well and uh, it comes as a work space as well, which can be installed as a desktop app and people can use it So if any one of you is interested, you can directly go to this link and check out this product. So once you have installed, so for installing icon package as well, right? just run the pip install icon. You will get the icon API installed. Only condition for this is uh, you should have access to icon workspace, and that should be running on your desktop. Okay. Uh, after installing, you can uh, check the version of it. icon version you can check it out here then uh, if you have the icon access there will be a api key access for you which you can either directly paste here or you can save that in a text file so for the secondary reasons i have kept that in text file if from where i am reading the api key and uh, setting up the icon api key here once the icon api key session has been set i will start i have reported some packages and optimizers here and so this is the basic uh, like uh, icon data provider class which i have implemented using the uh, by taking the reference from the qiskit uh, library only so there they implemented for uh, one of the yahoo finance i think and even for accessing the data from wikipedia so i was going through their code and trying to understand like uh, what all attributes they have loaded here and uh, how these attributes are being used in the code so the same base data provider class i have inherited in icon data provider class 
and tried loading the data. I tried keeping it as similar as to what they have done in QuizKit so that uh, there are not much changes in that. In the way the data is being loaded for uh, at both the places. So here if you see uh, while creating the object of this class, right? We are uh, passing out the list of the stock. It can be individual stock or it can be like five, ten stocks as well. We will pass a start date and end date. Using this, the icon data provider object will be initialized. And then uh, as we call the run method of this class, it will load the time series data for that particular start and end date and for the given list of stocks. Uh, interval since uh, we are going to deal with portfolio optimization right so we are loading the daily data so interval is daily here and uh, adjusted close price we needed for this so this is one of the parameter of icon get time series function so that's what i passed in and uh, then some pre-processing of the data in this run function itself so that the data gets ready in the desired format as it is needed by the Quizkit finance module so yeah, so this is basically, I mean, as I have extended the support for this new icon data API, right? This uh, workspace, the same way it can be extended to any of the data provider framework or APIs or WebSocket APIs, anyone. Uh, so moving forward, if you see the list of the stocks which I have used, so this is the Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google. So this is the uh rig format how these stocks are being uh, recognized by the definitive product icon across so the start date and end date we have given and then number of assets so it will be the length of the stock list risk appetite of the investors 0 0.7 i have uh, assumed here and the number of stocks to be picked so out of given five stocks, uh, the number of stocks which needs to be returned by the classical and quantum execution should be two. So that's how that's how we have that's why we have set the budget here. And this is another term penalty. So scaling of budget penalty term will be dependent on the number of assets here. So this object class we have uh, this class object we have initialized here with the required parameters and then we are executing the run method we will get the data so data dot stock data if you see here in data dot stock data uh, we are saving our uh, data here right so stock data is here for each of the stock values we are saving the adjacent flow adjusted close price here so after loading the data, I have printed the top five rows of the data set loaded and this is how it looks like. And uh, this is some statistical inference of the data, like count, mean. So for 598 days, the data was being loaded. Mean of the data, standard deviation and other values, uh, percentile values and maximum value for each of the stock is being given. And uh, after loading the data, I tried creating a close price history and tried comparing like how these stocks are providing uh, performing year wise. So I plotted this on a line chart. You can see. Uh, so basically, this is the line of uh, FP 382, right? Amazon and Google is 2904. Yeah. So this is the line of Google. So you can see the trend of Google, how it is moving forward, right? And even if you see the Amazon, how it is performing, right? And while other like uh, Netflix, Apple, and Facebook, uh, you can see how these three stocks are growing. Once this is being done, um, so we have calculated the mean vector for each of these stocks and uh, plotted this using bar plot here and uh, so this is being uh, so this method was being provided by the Quizkit finance module only so the base class which i extended which i inherited in icon data provider uh, right, base data provider this uh, class is having all these functions uh, get period return mean vector and get period return covariance matrix 
using which all these values are being uh, calculated. So after calculating the covariance matrix as well, so this is how it looks like. So basic covariance matrix is basically used for uh, showing the correlation, how well the two stocks are correlated with each other. Okay. So using the heat map, we have plotted the covariance between the, each of the stocks we have picked here. And uh, yeah. So moving forward, we also calculated correlation matrix here and uh, we have plotted the correlation <coughs> of each of, the, of these stocks. Then pair plot is being used to see the distribution of each of these stocks. And this can be also used for seeing the correlation bit, with one to the another stocks. Right, so let me zoom in this a bit. This is how it looks like. Okay. And uh, yeah, so after doing all this, so we have a portfolio optimization uh, module which is uh, dedicated for the portfolio optimization problem provided by Cuscuit Finance, right? So in this, we are passing the above calculated variables like mu, sigma, risk factor, and budget. <coughs> and uh, We will execute this and uh, we will formulate that to a quadratic program. So this is the output of this, which we have printed here. So each of these you can see here. Uh, 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 sorry, 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 for interrupting. Can you increase the size of the screen again, please? Um, is it fine now, Ahmed? Yeah, yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, so we have formulated that to uh, that to quadratic program. So if you want to see more about this as well, we can go to fully optimization. I have not covered much explanation about this because these things are already being done and uh, being demonstrated on the Quizlet tutorials here. So if anyone is being interested in learning and seeing this in detail about all like what is being done and all. So you can go to this link and uh, can go through all this code. So once uh, this was being formulated to a quadratic program, right? So I tried executing uh, this first uh, using NumPy icon solver. That is the classical approach. Okay, and uh, after that, uh, I tried executing that using variational quantum icon solver and. Uh, this one uh, QA implementation here. So in this, like uh, I've just talked about VQA, QA is uh, I think that is the old note. Let me check. Yeah. So talking about uh, classical eigen solver, right? So once we have the quadratic uh, program ready for this, when we try solving this using the classical eigen solver. We found that uh, asset at index position two and uh, five, like second asset and fifth asset, was being returned optimal to be. I mean, we should select asset uh, these two assets for investing in. And uh, let me look at the older version of this notebook here. Yes, yeah, so asset to Apple and yeah. yeah, actually, yeah, we should look at this one. Hmm, yeah, so these are some utilities functions which was being. Um, I tried modifying these as well for making use in this notebook. So this is the cla classical implementation here using NumPy minimum eigen solver here. So, so this is the like uh, list of the stocks which we have picked, right? And the stock at index position one and index position four was being returned by NumPy eigen solver, that is Apple and Google. And uh, minimum the value is the more optimal combination of the asset has been picked, right? And even if we see the probability here, that is uh, one for this combination of asset. 
the same when we tried uh, so this is the probability chart which i tried plotting it's not showing anything for any other combination of the assets because uh, rest all probability for rest others combination is being zero here right so that's why we are not seeing any uh, value here uh, at other state combination talking about vq combination uh, variational quantum eigen solver right? it is like one of the essential algorithms which is being used uh, in many applications so portfolio optimization is one of them even in hybrid uh, quantum classical approach also uh, variational quantum eigen solver algorithm are being used and uh, it consists of three steps basically converting the hamiltonian into polybasis then creating a variational form and then optimizing the parameter so the goal in vq is to find the ground state of psi of the hamiltonian h and uh, idea here is to choose the model of phi of theta so that the value of uh, theta of psi can be approximate well and uh, the energy can be minimized so this is the equation for that so if anyone is interested in learning more about vqe i have given the link uh, of this from the penny lane uh, website they can go and study about this from here so this is the implementation for the vqe in which we are passing the qubit of here running that on uh, a simulator and optimizer here we have used uh, cobilla anyone i mean you can play around with different better optimizers as well like uh, as in this notebook instead of cobilla i think i have used something else yeah i have used sls qp here so yeah so feel free to play around uh, different optimizers as well uh, and then set options like how many maximum number of iteration the circuit should be executed on the simulator and since uh, whatever output we get from the by executing this on quantum simulator on quantum algorithm it is based on the probability so that's why the value of iteration matters a lot here so when we executed this using the vqe right uh, we found the same combination of asset what we got from the by executing this on classical numpy eigen solver so apple and google stock were being recommended from this from the classical approach if you see vqe also recommended both uh, apple and uh, google stock only the probability of this was 0.9653 and the value was minus 0.0029 and similarly when we uh, so again the probability for each of the combination of the states we have plotted here and same when we tried uh, executing this using the quantum approximate optimization algorithm so this is also like uh, another quantum algorithm widely used for Uh, optimization combinatorial optimization problem on these devices and uh, applications of this are of qa qaoa are also very broad so in this also we have used cobilla optimizer only and the number of iterations we have kept thousand and when we executed this using the quantum approximate optimization algorithm the same stocks are being recommended it's not necessary that uh, when i will run again i will be getting the same set or combination of the stocks it might can change uh, right since this is probability based but when i was executing this sometimes i was getting different results sometime uh, i mean in the last run when i was uh, finalizing my notebook and uh, was finalizing my article i got this result here so there are very high chances when uh, you are going to run this on real quantum computer or or even if with the same code also right the chances are very high you might can get different results what i have got here but for now if you see i have got the similar results as i have got using the classical approach and using the vq algorithm the assets which was being recommended is apple and google here with the optimal value being minus 0.0029 and uh, this is the so after this if you see the probability for other combination the difference is not 
very much right so that's why when we plotted the probability for each of these combination of this assets this looks like very similar but the stock the combination of the assets which was being recommended from this algorithm was this one the very first line which you see here bar line so at the end just to conclude like uh, portfolio optimization is uh, just one of the many applications which we can solve using quantum computers and uh, as we have observed above right uh, with more advancement in the from the companies like ibm q penny lane d wave and all it is becoming much easier to plug and play with any other data providers api and uh, experiment around and build use cases so i have, as i have played with icon data api you can try your hands on with the same icon data api or any other data provider api if you are willing to and can see like how the data is being loaded how you can formulate this kind of problems on quantum computers and uh, to conclude about this portfolio optimization problem uh, we have seen the results in this notebook are matching with uh, for classical and quantum but there are chances we might can get different results as well because of because the systems are still not very much fault tolerant or because of the error available in the existing environment and uh, yeah so as in the starting itself i discussed about a uh, few of the limitations like what we are facing right now while trying to uh, solve certain problems like uh, using quantum computers uh, the very frequent problem which i am facing these days uh, being a data scientist when you are working with huge amount of data uh, it's becoming very much very difficult for me to map that classical data to quantum data and get the results out right so these type of constraints are existing but when you will work with a small set of data with just 100 or 200 records it should be working fine for references uh, like these are few of the this is a paper which i took for the reference i referred uh, this tutorial of quantum approximate optimization algorithm i referred uh, this portfolio optimization tutorial provided by quizkit and then this portfolio optimization and if anyone is new to the portfolio optimization problem right you can go to this link as well uh, this portfolio optimization problem has been explained in a very easy way with uh, some real i mean in this article you will not see basically uh, like uh, the implementation with quantum computer but the classical approach you will be able to learn the domain knowledge you will be getting from you okay and uh, yeah so these are some of the important links which i wanted to share with you all like if you want to access the code you can uh, go to this uh, github.com definitive api samples and uh, go to this uh, repo here from where you can get this notebook which i was sharing throughout the session if you want to learn more about icon data api you can go to this link if you want to learn how to get started with it you can go to quick start guide of icon data api and uh, if you have any questions regarding this tutorial and if you are facing any problem while trying your hands on with this notebook feel free to reach to us through developers portal or you can even check out few other products as well if you are willing to try your hands on and to get in touch with me either you can connect with me via whatsapp or on twitter or linkedin like this is my uh, username tech with shada feel free to reach out to me for research collaboration or for working on any of the new use cases in healthcare or uh, finance industry in healthcare already i'm working on medical image diagnosis using quantum computer so it's still in the pipeline few of the results i've got but still trying to improve that so if you have like something on which you want to collaborate or if i can be of any help or if you have some feedback or guidance for me uh, feel free to get in touch with me from twitter or linkedin as well. and this is my official email id if you have any concerns or questions or queries feel i mean any of the mode you can choose basically to get in touch with me so uh, yeah that's it from my side uh Thank I can take up the questions now. Very, very interesting talk. I liked using the notebook to, to explain the details of the coding. So actually, some um, 
some of our attendees um, uh, asked if they can check the notebook, if they can have the notebook. Is it available online? Yes, yes. I'm sharing the link in the chat. And also, I will share the presentation with you, Ahmed. You can share with the participants. Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. So any question, if uh, you have any question, you can raise your hand or write your question on uh, the chat. The people are asking for the link for the notebook and uh, link for the archive okay. paper. Yeah. So I'm sending the blog link and the GitHub repo link. From the blog link, you will get all the links which I was showing in the presentation. Okay. Okay, very good. And I will share the presentation as well with you. So yeah. Uh, both the links I have pasted in the chat for the GitHub and for the article both. So, yeah. so if if anyone has any question, please raise your hand or uh, you can write your question on the chat. So in the meanwhile, uh, until we uh, we see more question, uh, uh, I, I have a question, uh, Shadab. Um, yes, you tried solving the problem using classical approach and, and quantum approach. So what's the benefits? What is the main benefit of using the quantum approach? QA or, or Yes. Yes, so uh, since the number of stocks are very low here, right? Uh, I have not observed the benefit in terms of execution run time. So when we have better quantum systems, we can expect that uh, when we are formulating the problem with higher number of stocks, uh, we can expect some benefit in terms of runtime there. For now, I just try to compare the results, whether when we are trying to solve uh, this kind of problem on classical computer and on quantum computer, whether we are getting the similar kind of results or not. So did you try to increase uh, the data set on, on quantum computer to, to check the correctness or the performance? Uh, no, so right now just simulator part was being done. Quantum, uh, like uh, executing this on real quantum computer is still pending. So first I was, I mean, right now I'm occupied with option pricing problem, like formulating that with real time data. If you, if you would have checked uh, European option pricing tutorial on provided by Quizkit, right? Uh, this that tutorial is good, but it it's not being explained how we can load some real time data and uh, how those parameters are being set there, so that if someone wants to try option pricing with some real time data, how they can do that. So I'm trying to make it easy uh, that tutorial also first, and then come back to this to execute on uh, actual quantum computer and see the results. So, so it was uh, just. Uh, Experimental thing you can say for now. So uh, uh, how about uh, encoding the data on, on a quantum computer? You didn't mention what what type of encoding you used to to, to load the data on, on the quantum computer. Uh, that was being uh, taken care by the portfolio optimization uh, module provided by Quizkit Finance. OK, so you used the default. You didn't do any. No, I, I didn't did anything there. I okay. used the default. Very good. This is very interesting. So, but what about the healthcare? Do you have any trials here on the healthcare analytics? Yes. So, in healthcare analytics, like uh, uh, actually, I was doing. I'm still doing my masters from LGMU. Uh, that's uh, distance learning. So, uh, in that, I chose the topic uh, like uh, solve. I mean, medical image diagnosis using quantum computer. So what I proposed was like uh, uh, classifying the images, those uh, breast cancer images, using uh, quantum support vector machine, quantum neural network, and quantum nearest neighbors, and see the results, how well they are performing in comparison to the classical approaches, right? So with, uh, with a smaller data set, I was able to get some results, which is uh, quite close to the classical approach. But as I am scaling that to higher numbers of records, right? 
like in real time we, we are not going to just work with 100 or 200 images it can it's going to be thousand of images the kernel keeps running for like infinite amount of time so there i have to parallelize the things and all so still that work is in progress but that's like one of the pain point i have faced so far like uh, how to map those data to quantum data and get it executed at a time or batch processing i have to do all these things i think this is uh, really interesting to see how a quantum computer can deal with many images this is challenged so far yes. uh, so did you try this uh, 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 portfolio optimization on real quantum uh, ibm or you just tried the simulator no uh, real quantum on real quantum computer i tried but i tried the qiski tutorial only like what they have provided uh, the notebook which i was sharing with the uh, fang stock i have not tried that yet with the uh, real stock uh, i mean with real quantum computer uh, that's just the simulator version being here. So, uh, uh, anyone has any question? I don't want to take um, the the mic and ask all the questions alone. So, if you have any question, <laughs> please uh, write your question on the chat, or you can raise your hand. I can open the mic for you if you want to ask. Okay. So we don't have any more questions. So uh, uh, I'd like to thank you, Shadab, very much for this uh, uh, really nice talk. Um, and I will wait for uh, uh, for another presentation on the healthcare uh, analytics. Uh, it will be very interesting to to see you again in uh, Hepatia series. Sure, Ahmed. And thanks a lot for giving me the opportunity to present what I. I mean, present my blog. What I wrote. Yeah, about. if you if you have anything, we we encourage a, a young researcher to present to you their work on on Hepatia, uh, because it will uh, discussion is very good for uh, for uh, for the research. So um, yes. I'd like to thank you very much. I'll stop the recording now. Uh, and please, uh, if you want uh, to discuss anything uh, on Hepatia, uh, anytime, please.